Well, welcome back. In this video, we're going to apply the definitions and constructions to creating some really efficient shortcuts for taking a given segment, taking a given length, really, from a de design perspective, and subdividing it into pieces that are all proportional, or pieces that fit into specified rational relationships to one another. The tools that we're going to use that will simplify the process, speed up that process, are the sector that you've, I've already introduced to you, and also a combination of a straight edge, a layout square, and a marked ruler. And so that technique is almost as fast as the sector in many of these examples. Um, and it's a nice technique to know about in case you can't get your hands on a sector or the sector that you're able to get your hands on is either too big or too small to be practical for the particular layout job that you're working on. So the techniques that we're going to apply those tools to are ones that we've, we already know how to do. We can, we can do constructions that are listed on this board using nothing but a compass and a straight edge. It's just that those constructions take more time and they require more stray marks on your paper and that can get to be pretty tedious and pretty busy when you are working on a more complicated design task. So we're going to review the construction for finding the nth part of a segment. In other words, finding a module that you can step out the entire length of the segment with a total of n times. We're going to find a rational cut of a segment, uh, meaning that if I've got a particular length, I'd like to be able to quickly cut off 3 eighths of that length or 5 nineteenths of that length, length. you know, those, those, those kinds of tasks. It turns out that we can also cut off irrational um, parts, irrational pieces of a given segment. We just have to be able to construct that irrational cut at a larger scale first, and I'll, I'll show you what I mean by that too. We'd like to be able to construct continuously proportional segments. Um, so one segment then another segment that's either scaled up or down by a factor, another segment that's scaled up or down yet again by that same factor, and so on. We'd like to be able to uh, construct a sequence of continuously proportional segments. And if we can do that, then we'd like to be able to take a given segment and divide it into pieces that are amongst themselves continuously proportional. And so finally, you know, these are all tasks, one through four, are all tasks that I've said we, we know how to do. We can do them with a compass and a straight edge, oftentimes just using parallel line constructions. <clears throat> but the benefit of using a sector or even the ruler layout square and straight edge construction um, is that it's faster. So we're going to conclude our, our uh, tutorial today with a look at why those techniques work. Because we wouldn't necessarily want to use them if they were faster but wrong or inaccurate or somehow otherwise inferior. And it turns out that they're not. They're, they're exact techniques as well. So we'll need to see why. So our first task is that we have a segment. One like this. A, B, and we'd like to divide it into n equal parts. n can be any integer. Let's just choose 7 for the sake of this demonstration. Our sector is one quick way to do it. What we'll do is we'll take our compass, get my large long-legged compass, open it up, and set it to the span of our segment. Then I'm going to open up my sector and put the tips of the compass between the sevens after adjusting the legs so that it'll fit. 
take them in and out, make sure there's no, no tension. Close them up a little bit to get it so that it's about right. But yeah, there's our, our span AB, the length of AB stretched between the sevens on the sector. Now I'm going to take another compass, smaller one, and I'm going to try to set it so that it spans without tension or compression between the ones. And that should be our step size. That should be our seventh part of AB. And I can check that by starting at one end of A and stepping out once, twice, three, four, five, six, seven. We'll make it to the end of B. So this segment here, AC, is in a one to seven ratio with AB. And so that's our first, <clears throat> first primary application of the sector. I think we've seen something like that before, but we're going to review that and all of the similar applications of the sector in this series of videos. Okay, well, same task. Imagine we still have some segment A B that we hope to divide into, let's just say, seven equal parts again. So we need the step size. We need to get the step size of that. And the problem is, is that we could imagine that maybe we don't have an adequate sector. Either our sector is too small for a line segment of this size, or our sector is just made out of paper and we've used it and abused it and don't have time to make another one that's holding together better. So we can do that construction using just our straight edge. So I line the straight edge up with our line. A layout square, we, I'm gonna get the taller layout square. Sometimes it helps to have a longer beam. So we line the layout square. One leg of it is going to be lined up with our straight edge and the other leg of it is lined up right at the end of our segment. And we're going to just draw a nice long perpendicular. And if I need to extend that, I, I certainly can, but I just need a perpendicular to our segment at point A. All right, well, I want to divide this up into seven pieces, so I need to get a ruler. That's where our ruler comes in in this construction. And I want to look at the marks on my ruler and find a distance that I can conveniently stretch from point B to anywhere along the vertical line that I've just drawn. And I want that distance to be a multiple an integer multiple of the number of parts that I was hoping to divide AB into, of the step size that I want. So if I want a seventh of AB, then I need to look at my ruler and find numbers like seven or 14, and that's as far as this ruler is going to go, and see if either of those stretch out nicely from point B to this side. And obviously seven does not, doesn't even reach. 14 might work, but it looks like I might need to um, either extend this vertical line to get the zero mark lined up with it or um, need to choose a different value. Now I can do things like counting half inches. You know, I, I could say, well, if I, was, if I was counting out seven inches and that was too short and 14 inches was too long, I could use something like, um, well, let's see, seven inches is 14 half inches. And then 
um, I need seven more half inches, so that's going to give me to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, all the way up to ten and a half. So ten and a half would be okay. Um, ten and a half inches is twenty-one half inches. Right. So that that would be okay. I could do that. I go from the zero mark at the B to the ten and a half mark on the vertical leg and I try my best to line them up. Sometimes it helps to get a very sharp pointer, put it into one point so that you can line it up with the mark, one end mark on your ruler and then just pivot off of that to get the other 10 and a half mark that you want. And that's okay, you know, that'll work. I have a feeling that a lot of people aren't want, wanting to do the fractional arithmetic to figure out that 10 and a half inches is 21 half inches, um, which is a multiple of seven. Um, that's where the centimeter scale comes in. So I can look for distances like seven, 14, 21, 28. Looks like that's going to work pretty well. So if I put the zero mark at point B on my paper and then pivot it until the 28 mark is appearing to be lined up very well with the other leg of my, whoop, I've moved it so I've got to readjust. And this is the one drawback of this technique is that Sometimes it takes about three hands to get it right. Uh, but that looks like that's lined up pretty well now. I've got the zero down here at point B and I've got 28 intersect, 28 centimeters intersecting with the vertical leg. And since 28 is four times seven, what I wanna do is from either of these ends, just step out, ah, I've moved again step out to four centimeters. And I'm gonna mark that with a pin prick right on the ruler. I'll circle that pin prick so maybe you can see it a little bit better and draw an X through where the hole is that I can see and you probably can't on your camera. And then all I need to do is drop a perpendicular from that pin prick down to my line. I will do that by putting my straight edge back on my line. And what I've got at that point is the distance from B to this intersection that I'm now marking with a pinprick should be one seventh of the overall distance and we'll check that. I will set my compass to distance from B to that intersection that I just drew. And I'm going to step it off. One, two, three, four, five, six and seven I line up on a or at least pretty close there's a little bit of error because I was going fast so that technique works just about as well as is using a sector to find this is C C B to a B is one to seven one to seven so that works just about as well as the sector to find a given part of a given segment. In this case, I was looking for one seventh, but I could have done any integer part that I want. Uh, really about the only drawback is I think it sometimes takes some practice to do this operation of taking your straight edge and lining the zero mark up at one end and then the appropriate integer multiple of your part your uh, seven in this case. So I had to find that I had to line up the zero and the 28 there. And if, if you're a little bit off on that alignment, then your step size is going to be off. And that's probably where some of the error came from when I just slightly overshot A. 
Uh, but that, that actually can happen with a sector too if you're not super careful at adjusting the, the legs on it so that uh, your compass points fit between the, the points on the sector. So both operations take practice, but they are both capable of much more quickly dividing your segment into a given part. Well, the last two variations on the construction of finding a given part of a given segment are useful for just what it sounds like. If you would like to be able to divide a space into seven equal pieces or 11 equal pieces or just three equal pieces, um, those past two constructions using either a sector or the straight edge layout square and ruler will get you your step size for making that division. But sometimes you want to just jump straight to dividing a segment up or cutting from a segment a piece that exists in a rational relationship to the whole or a, a rational relationship to the remainder. So what I mean by that is imagine I've got a segment we'll call it a B once more and I'd like to I'd like to divide a B so so that one piece is in a I don't know a four to nine ratio with the whole. Well, what that means is that if I would have done this in the past, I would have just needed to step off nine equal pieces of AB and pick four of those to get the cut segment that exists in a four to nine ratio with the whole. Well, I can accomplish that fairly quickly with my dividers, my compass. Set one end at the end of B, tighten the other end down so that it is at the left end, the A end. So I've measured my distance from A to B. Then I'm going to grab my sector and I'm just, it's really going to just be a variation on what we saw in the last construction. In the last construction, I wanted to find four ninths of AB. So I started by setting my compass tips to the nines. This just takes a little bit of care to get them lined up, but I think I am almost there now. Okay, now they fit pretty well. So I've got my compass tip set up with the nines on my sector. I'm going to set those aside. Now in the past construction with our sector, I wanted one ninth, so I would have taken my other compass and caused it to span between the ones. But I no longer want one ninth. I want four ninths. So I'm going to set my compass without changing the sector setting. I'm going to set my compass so that it spans between the fours on the linear scale of my sector. So now I can set the sector aside, put one point of that compass on A, and mark the other point where it intersects the line. Now I know you can't see either of those, so I will draw them. And so AC by that construction to the overall AB is 4 to 9. Now notice that gives us another proportional relationship as well because 
If there are four pieces of AB making up AC, the remaining five pieces of AB have to make up CB. So I could also point out that AC to CB, that's four to five. So this segment and this segment are in a four to five ratio. And so that's another thing that you can do. If you want to divide a space into two pieces that satisfy a particular ratio, that, so this would be in a four to five ratio, then what I would do is take that ratio and say, well, what's the sum of these two terms, four and five? That's nine. So then I take that nine and do just what I did a minute ago. I measure the overall width, set my sector so that that overall width is on the nines. And then I take my other compass and either pick up the fours like I did and mark that on my segment. Or I could also set the compass to, and I'll go ahead and do that just for the sake of showing that this all works out. I could take the other compass and set it to the fives. Feels pretty close. And yeah, it was a little bit off, so let's try again. That's a better fit in the sockets. Yeah. And then that lines up with BC. So that construction really solves two tasks. It gives you the steps that you need to either lop off a prescribed ratio of an entire segment or cut an entire segment into two pieces that satisfy some given ratio. It can, be work it can be used for either one. So this construction actually has applications to directly to furniture design. You know, maybe you were wanting to do a nightstand, which is going to fit in some rectangular space. And this nightstand was going to be a, kind of a deep drawer on the top with legs coming off the bottom. And so maybe you want the top to be in a three to five um, uh, ratio with the, you want to divide this space up so that there's three pieces in this top space vertically to five spaces in the bottom space vertically. Well, you could use this construction to do that. You would take the overall height, set it to eight steps, three plus five, pick three of those steps off of your sector. That's gonna mark off the top height where maybe you'd have a big tabletop and then some legs coming off on the bottom, perhaps with a stretcher between them to make up the base. So that, that construction, appears a lot in, in furniture design. And in fact, once we get through the compass, no, once we get through the straight edge layout square and ruler version of this construction, we'll move on to another construction that generalizes this idea of dividing up a segment into pieces that are all in proportion, not just two pieces, but several. Well, we can adapt the sector construction for dividing a segment into two pieces that satisfy either a rational relationship between each other or one piece satisfies a rational relationship to the whole, we can gener generalize that same approach or we can adapt that same approach to the straight edge, layout square, and ruler construction. So we'll start off the same way. Got some some line segment, A, B, and I want to find A, C such, such that I'll use the same proportions, I'll use the same ratio, such that A, C to A, B 
is, uh, what did I do? I did four to nine. All right, well, I take my layout square, line up my straight edge with the original line segment, find one end of the line segment and put the layout square at that end with one leg going vertically and the other leg going um, aligned with the straight edge, aligned with AB. And I just draw and more carefully maybe draw a perpendicular at A. So now I'm going to see if I want to divide AB at a point that is going to be four ninths of the way from A to B, then I need to take my, if I wanted to do it just one, one ninth of the way across, I would need to find my straight edge, find a multiple of nine on it, and stretch that distance from B to wherever it intersects with the vertical line. All right, well, uh, nine or 18 would be good choices. If I try to use the inch scale, nine doesn't work, and boy, 18 maxes out the length of this particular straight edge, and if I were gonna use that, I'd have to extend my vertical, which I, I could certainly do, but I'm gonna look for nine or 18 or 27 on the centimeter scale, so I don't have to play those games, and it looks like the 27 and the zero will line up just fine. If I wanted to be a little bit more, yeah, 36 would be too far. So the multiple nine times three equals 27 is gonna work for me. So I'll take something to, oh, there's my pointer. I was looking for that a minute ago. So I'm going to make a mark, pinprick mark at the end of B and at the end of A and line up the zero with B and try to pivot the straight edge keeping the zero on B until the 27 appears to intersect with my vertical. And I'm not quite there, almost. Yeah, this is the part that's always a little fiddly, especially when you're trying not to stick your head under the camera lens and block what you guys are seeing. But I think I've done it. I think I've drawn my mark. And so now, if I want to go four ninths of the way from B back to A, and I have marked out a distance that's a uh, integer multiple of nine from B to, uh, to this vertical, then I need to take that integer multiple, a step size of three centimeters, and travel up the straight edge that distance four times. If I had only gone out to, to the three and marked that down, that would have just given me my single step size. That would have given me one ninth of the way across from A to B. So I'm going to step out three, that's one step, six, two steps, nine, three steps, and then 12, that's four steps. So I'm going to put a pinprick on where the 12 is on my ruler and hope I didn't just move my ruler. I think I did, but I'm going to carry on. And I'll mark that pinprick so you can see it. There it is, circled and crosshaired. Now I just take my straight edge once more, line it up with my segment. Line the layout squares one leg with the straight edge and the other leg where that mark was so that if I drop a perpendicular through that mark to my segment AB, that should be my point C. So I actually did it backwards. I just found <laughs> the magic of erasers BC such that ha, BC to AB is four to nine, and it is. This distance is about four ninths of this distance. And so this distance would be five ninths of, of the same distance. <coughs> now look, if I didn't wanna fix that mistake just by erasing, what I could have just as easily done 
if I really wanted to go from A to C that was a step of four ninths. When I had my, my ruler lined up, I could have just had the zero up here on the axis, the 27 here at point B, and then instead of stepping four steps of three from B, I just go one, so three, six, nine, 12, And there's the point that I would have dropped down. So when I set up my straight edge and, and uh, lay out square to drop a perpendicular here, then, well, that distance would have been four ninths of, of um, AB. So you can go from either end. I just was finding that it was a little bit more convenient to measure from the right end so that I don't, again, stick my head under the camera. All right, so that technique works almost as well as the sector. Again, it has, a, has that drawback that it can be a little bit fiddly working with the ruler and making sure that you're accurately lining up the measurement marks on that ruler with your, your um, in one endpoint of the segment and then the other one making sure it intersects accurately with the, uh, the vertical that you've drawn. But it'll give you a subdivision of your line. Well, this next construction where we want to construct a sequence of segments that are all continuously proportional. Meaning that each sequence, each meaning that each um, segment in the sequence sits in the same ratio with the next segment in the sequence as all of the others do. So in this case, I've got a segment AB I want to construct a new segment CD that is in a seven to six ratio with it. So if I were to divide AB into six pieces, CD should be seven of those pieces long. And then another segment that's in a seven to six ratio with CD, yet another segment in the seven to six ratio with um, the new one. So um, it, it just becomes a continuous process of creating continuously proportional segments. That's why it's called that. So that's something I can do with the sector because the sector is a tool that we can use to scale up or scale down a segment. And in this case, that's what I'm wanting to do. I'm wanting to scale CD up from AB by a, in a seven to six ratio. So how I do that, I'm going to set my compass to the length of this segment that I've already drawn to AB. I'm going to place that length, or I'm gonna uh, apply that length between the six marks on my sector. I'm going to take another compass and put it between the seven marks on that sector. The distance between those seven marks should be the distance between C and D, the endpoints of my new segment. Now to keep things neat, what I'm going to do is line up a straight edge with AB again, and then move a layout square, line it up with that straight edge. The other leg of the layout square will be at that A end point. I'm just going to lightly draw a vertical line, not a real dark one. And all that's going to do is give me a guideline that I can put the endpoints of all of my new segments on. So I've got the length of the segment. I've got one other, one location where the endpoint will be. It'll be along this vertical line. And then I'm just going to cheat and use, just so that I can neatly draw all of these continuously proportional segments parallel, I'm just going to take my long straight edge, line it up with AB, and then on the other side, lightly draw a line, starting at this vertical line. I will take my compass that I know is set to be in a seven to six ratio with AB, and then mark my endpoints along that line. I'll take my straight edge once more and darken that.
And that is CD. It's a line segment. Let's get rid of this part of it. It's a line segment that has been a blow up of AB. It's been an expansion of AB by a seven to six ratio. Now to get a bunch of segments that are continuously proportional, I just continue that process. So now I get out my sector again, take my measurement of the length CD, and I'm going to move that from what had been on the sevens, I'm going to move it to the sixes. Because now I'm looking for a new segment, EF, that's going to be in a 7 to 6 ratio with CD. So now I'm wanting to set CD's length to 6 to represent that it's now divided up into 6 parts. And I'm going to take my compass now and reset it without adjusting the sector. Reset it so that it spans between the 7s. Hoping I can do this four times. Okay, so there it is between the sevens. This compass setting between the sevens is going to give me the length of the next segment in the series, EF. So I'll do the same thing. I will take my straight edge, draw a light line segment that starts at my vertical guideline, goes out beyond the length of CD, take my compass setting that is 7 to 6 ratio with CD and mark it on that lightly drawn line. I get these endpoints that are going to represent E and F and then darken that line. And there EF is in a 7 to 6 ratio with CD. So at this point AB, CD, and EF are three continuously proportional segments and I can just continue this process for as long as I want or as long as I need as long as I don't start running out of opening space on my sector. So I'm going to move this compass that had been set to the sevens. I'm going to open up my sector wider so that that same distance will now span the sixes. Okay, And I'm doing that because I'm trying to construct segment GH that is in a 7 to 6 ratio with EF. So I've set the EF distance onto the sixes on my linear scale of my sector, although I'm going to adjust that a little bit better. I think it slipped a bit. Once the sector starts opening up this much, it gets a little bit difficult, but there it is. Set it to the sixes. Now I'm going to reset this compass. I'm going to open it more so that it will span the sevens. And that is going to give me the distance between the points G and H that I'm trying to construct. And what I'm hoping this process is also showing you. So there it is set between the sevens now. What I'm hoping this process is also showing you is that when you're doing these proportional layout problems, it often pays to get yourself a pretty good sized compass and a pretty good sized sector. And that actually can be one of the detriments of using a sector, is that sometimes you just can't get one that's big enough. In this distance, G H is now in a 7 to 6 ratio with the rest. 
race the extra, draw in GH. And again, I could continue that process indefinitely and I'm going to just get more and more segments that fit within this continuously proportional family. This is not a linear increase, by the way. You can notice that if I connect, I don't know how well you're going to be able to see it on camera, if I connect the endpoint H to the endpoint B, these two, D and F, fall short of the straight line that connects them. And that's going to continue. As you continue this continuously proportional process, these endpoints are going to start tracing out a curve that gets stretches farther and farther to the right. Well, and that's how that process works. A good application of this process is going to be the focus of our upcoming design workshop where you're going to want to design chests of drawers or a box containing a bunch of shelves like a tall bookshelf so that the heights of those subdivided vertical spaces, either the drawer heights or the heights of the shelf bays, are all continuously proportional. If you look at pieces of furniture, furniture like that, you'll often see that the top shelves of a bookshelf are smaller in height compared to the bottom shelves. And the um, top heights of the drawers, or the heights of the top drawers are shorter than the heights of the bottom drawers in a stacked chest of drawers like a dresser. That's for both creating a, an appearance of, of stability, so it's a visual effect, groundedness, um, but it's also helps you to create some mechanical stability for those those types of uh, pieces of furniture because you are then able to put your heavier books on the bottom shelves or your bigger things in your bottom drawers and it prevents those pieces of furniture from being as top heavy as they might be otherwise. So we'll see how to apply this skill to designing pieces of furniture like that and that will actually be one of the primary focuses of the next design workshop. Okay, same task as before. I've got a segment AB and I want to create more segments CD, EF, and GH so that that sequence of segments, they're all continuously proportional. And they want, I want them to be continuously proportional in the same ratio of 7 to 6, just like we did with the sector a minute ago. So we saw that we were able to do it with a sector, but we're going to put the sector away because what happens if you don't have one? Or what happens if your sector is not big enough to create the continuously proportional segments that you want? Well, you can, you can do this construction with a straight edge, a ruler, and a layout square. And I'm gonna really start out like I did before. I'll, I'll line up my straight edge with my initial segment AB. draw a light vertical line and I think I'm actually going to continue that line a little bit just so that I've got as much height as possible. It'd be nice if I had a bigger layout square for this but I'm going to be doing my straight edge layout square and ruler construction to create continuously proportional segments. That means I'm going to be doing it repeatedly. And so I am going to, what I need to do is figure out a way to expand AB onto a new line. Here, I'll draw that new line up here. So this is the line that CD is going to be on. But I want to uh, I want to figure out a way that I can take AB and expand it so that I get a distance that I can cut this line with that is in a 7 to 6 ratio with AB. So here's how that's going to work. I am going to apply our very first construction 
of finding one-sixth, a one-sixth part of AB. So here, I'll take my ruler that is 12 inches long. And line up the 12 on AB, on point B of AB, line up the zero on my vertical line, and then I'm going to make my, if I can find my pointer, I can, my all, mark that at 11, uh, at um, 10, because 10 is two inches back from 12, and two inches out of 12 is one sixth of that distance. So I'm really just performing the construction for finding one sixth of AB. So I've made my mark here, and I'm going to drop that mark down to AB. With my layout square, I'm just going to do it lightly because this distance here is one sixth of AB. Well, if I added that distance, one sixth of AB to AB itself, then that's going to give me seven sixths of AB. So I'm effectively going to do that, but what, the way I'm going to do it is that I'm just going to transfer the endpoint of B up to this candidate line for CD, as well as this mark that I've dropped down to give me the one sixth measurement. So at this point, if I were to take, go from C to this point here, I would have just copied AB. But the other thing I've copied is this distance here, which is one sixth of AB. So I can take out a compass. So I guess I need a compass for this, but that, that so we'll, we'll add a compass to this construction. It's not just a straight edge layout square and ruler. And I'm going to step that over one. So that's giving me my point D. And that works just fine. I have expanded AB to a new segment, CD, and that new segment is in a seven to six ratio with AB. Now let's think about that for a minute. That, that worked okay, but is it, is it the most efficient thing that we can do? You know, I, I had to bring in this compass to step out that additional distance. It'd be nice if we could think of a way just to make this work with a ruler, a straight edge, and a layout square. And so let's think about perhaps if we draw a new candidate line that we're going to expand CD onto. Perhaps we can expand CD onto this new line, E, F, find F in other words, such that E, F is in a seven to six ratio with C, D, and maybe we can get away with not having to use our compass as a stepping tool. So, here's how it's going to work. We're going to, first of all, make sure that we've got a ray, you know, a, line that starts at E and then just goes off indefinitely off to the right. It's going to accept eventually our cut F, our point F, that's going to create a distance EF that's in a seven to six ratio with CD. But the way I'm going to find that is that I'm going to move my straight edge so that it's aligned back with CD and I'm going to copy, I'm going to project that endpoint D with my layout square up 
to the line that starts at E. And so all I've done there is that I've copied this distance CD onto the line that I eventually want to put a cut F on, a point F onto, that will give me a segment E to F that's in a seven to six ratio with CD. But all I've done is copied the length CD up onto that line. So this segment and this segment aren't in a seven to six ratio yet. They're in a one to one ratio, but I can fix that. The way I can fix that is that I'll go back and take my ruler and I'm once again going, since my base step size is one sixth of my starting line, so, so my one sixth of uh, CD, I'm going to look on my ruler and try to find numbers that are integer multiples of six. So there's a six, there's a 12, there's an 18, I suppose I could use if I wanted to. But what I'm going to do is that I'm going to take this new unmarked, unnamed point, and I am going to align that with one of those multiples. I'll align it onto the 12. And then I'm gonna pivot my ruler on that point until the other end, the zero mark, appears to line up with my vertical guideline. And I have to look kind of two places at once, which is hard, uh, but I try to make sure that the 12 is lined up here at my temporary point, the zero is lined up up here. Now, that's what I would have done. I would have done that same operation if I was wanting to divide this distance E to my unnamed point up into six equal places because all I'd have to do is use my layout square to project the two, the four, the six, the eight, the 10, and the 12 down onto this line. And it would have divided that distance up into six equal pieces because those two inch marks along this ruler, when projected down in a direction that's perpendicular to this line, those correspond to one sixth of this distance. So all I've got to do is take one more step beyond the endpoint. So if the 12 is marked at this point, I'm going to step over to the 14. I'm going to mark that point. And then rather than projecting it down, I'll just project it back up to my new candidate line. But I'll darken it and make it visible to you so you can see what's going on. So to make that projection, I just need to slide my straight edge so that it's above the line that begins at E now. Get it so that it's butted up pretty well. And then I'll line up my layout square with that new point that I just created that was a two inch overshoot, my ruler. I'm gonna mark it up. And that point there is F. Okay, so EF to CD, EF to CD are in a seven to six ratio. And that's something that we are able to accomplish without a sector and without a compass. And that, that's a pretty valuable construction because as we blow up these segments larger and larger, I mean, this could be an operation that when we're doing when we're trying to mark out distances, maybe on a piece of material that we're constructing a large scale object out of, you're quickly going to run out of distance between the legs or the beams of your compass or the, the legs of your sector. They're just, it's just not going to be big enough for doing that operation. But you can always make a bigger layout square and you can always make a bigger straight edge and always make a bigger ruler to perform this construction with. You might need helpers to hold the ends um, in alignment with the locations that you want, but it's something that you can always do. So without as much commentary, I'll go ahead and construct segment GH that is in a seven to six ratio with the new one that I've just created, EF. And 
we'll see that we can just continue this process. So I need to come up with a new parallel line. Draw it lightly for the moment. Project. EF up to that line. So this is going to be point G eventually. I'm going to move my straight edge out of the way. Grab my ruler. Find multiple six. I'll use zero through twelve once more. Pivot the tw off the twelve until the zero lines up with my vertical alignment line. Then I will overshoot to the 14. Mark it so that you can see it. And project that mark vertically back up to, well, Back up, I'll just do it down. Project that, more, yeah, I'll line up my straight edge onto this new line beginning at G. Line the other beam of the layout square with my reference mark. That was the overshot to 14 along my ruler. And that gives me a new endpoint, H. Okay, so it's really not that slow of an operation. I think with practice, you can get it to where you can just repeatedly create these, these uh, continuously proportional segments using nothing but a straight edge, a layout square, and a ruler until you run out of length on your ruler. So our next task then is going to be to take a given segment and cut it into three or four or ten pieces like this so that those pieces are continuously proportional amongst themselves. We'll have to see how that works. Well, now we've seen two techniques for taking a segment like this one, AB and expanding it into new segments that are continuously proportional to each of its predecessors in, this, in the sequence. So I could create a new segment, maybe CD, that is in a, say, a 7 to 6 ratio with AB. It's kind of what we've done in the past couple of examples. And then another one after that that's in a 7 to 6 ratio with CD, and so on. So we've got a technique using our sector that allows us to do that. And then we've also got a technique using the straight edge layout square and ruler that allows us to accomplish the same thing. But another important task in layout and design would be to take a segment like this and instead of expanding it into a new sequence of, of um, continuously proportional segments, I'd like to divide it like to cut it in maybe three places so that I could get four segments that are continuously proportional to one another. So the question would be, well, how do I know where to make the cuts? And that's the subject of this video. The nice thing about this technique is that it relies upon your ability to expand a segment. So if you can expand a segment, you can divide one. And that's what we're going to see here. So here's how the process works. I'm going to take a ruler, line it up with 
point A on my segment, just at some angle. It doesn't really matter what, although it should be making an acute angle tilted towards B. And I'm going to make use of all of my space here. I don't imagine I will need it all. All right. Next thing I'm going to do is that I'm going to take my compass, set it to some setting. Um, good rule of thumb is that if you are wanting to divide your segment AB into four segments, you're better off making sure that this distance is one, two, three, four, you know, at least a fourth of AB. And this, this one is a little bit over that. So that, that should work for me. So what I'm going to do with that distance is that I'm going to put one point of the compass on A and the other point on this new diagonal line that I just drew. I'm going to make a mark and draw a line on that mark so that you can see it. And that is going to be the segment, the first segment in the sequence that I'm going to start expanding uh, continuously. And I'm going to do it in this seven to six ratio that I've been using. By the way, the reason for that ratio is that when you are expanding segments, if you chose a ratio that involved a, too big of a growth, then each new segment is going to get large quickly and you're going to just run out of room to work with it. And so for these examples, this, this seven to six ratio indicates that I'm, my segments are only growing by one sixth each time. I'm taking a sixth of the given segment and attaching it onto the new one. So that's not that fast of a rate. So I'm going to go ahead and expand this new segment into a total of four segments, each one in a seven to six ratio with its predecessor. And I'm just going to use my sector to do that. And um, if you remember that process, we just line up my old segment distance between the sixes, readjust the compass so that it will fit between the sevens. And all of that again is with out, let me make sure I've done it. And it looks like it's a little big. Nope, that fits. But all of that is without messing with the setting on the sector itself. So that new distance taken from the sevens, I'm going to move it to my old mark on this diagonal line. That was here. And make a new mark forward of it on the diagonal line. And I will take a pencil and draw a line through that so you all can see it. All right, I'm going to take that distance and expand it now. So I'm going to place it between the sixes, the base step size on my sector. Open this compass a little bit so I can get it to fit between the sevens. That like so. Transfer that new distance to my line. Move it back to the sector, but this time to the sixes and open the sector up so that the compass will fit between the sixes. You can see that it does. Now I'll open the, the compass up so that it will span between the sevens on my sector without adjusting the sector's opening at all. And that becomes my last distance that I need to transfer to this diagonal line. There it is. At this point, I'm going to put the sector away. Okay, next thing I need to do is project a perpendicular line upward from B. And I'm going to do that by aligning my straight edge up with the segment AB. And I'm going to project perpendicular line up from B. 
and it doesn't really matter how far I go, just as long as it's higher up than this last mark I made on my diagonal line. Now, the reason I did that is that what I'd like to do is that I'd like to take this diagonal line and effectively pivot it from point A so that it swings down and intersects this vertical line, this perpendicular vertical line coming up from B. And so I'll just use a compass to do that. I'm going to take my compass, put the point on A, the pivot, open the beams so that the marking point hits that last line. Our last mark on my diagonal line. I just do that so that I can find this intersection. I want to get it accurately, so I'm going to take my awl, poke a hole in it. All right. Once I've got that, I can grab my ruler once more. Line the one end of the ruler up with my intersection, the other end up with the vertex here at point A. And I'm going to draw a new line. That new line intersects my vertical. Okay, and once I've done that, I just need to take my compass once more, put the point on A, and move the marking point to each of the endpoints of these segments that I drew along my diagonal that were continuously proportional to one another. I'm just going to swing arcs from each of those points until they intersect this new line. Try to get as accurately as I can. There we go. And then one more. Pretty good. And again, on those, I would like for them to be easy for me to locate, so I'm going to mark each of those intersections on this diagonal with my all. Okay, now we're about there. So now all I need to do is take my straight edge once more, line it up with the segment itself with AB, and then put a layout square on it. And I'm going to slide that layout square back and forth until it finds each of these marks I've made. And I'm going to drop down. So that I make intersections with AB. And so, I've divided AB into four segments that are continuously proportional. In other words, CD is in a 7 to 6 ratio with AC, DE is in a 7 to 6 ratio with CD, and BE is in a 7 to 6 ratio with DE. And that's what we wanted. So with our techniques for expanding any given segment continuously in any given ratio, if we throw a compass into the mix, we can take this, what really amounts to, this is just a custom ruler. It's a custom scale. And all we've done is we've taken that custom scale and pivoted it from the zero mark at A down to where it intersects with, with this vertical line drawn at B, just like we did in our straight edge layout square and ruler constructions. And once those two endpoints lined up, we just projected these marks on our custom scale down to our line segment AB in order to divide it 
in a way that the subsegments are all continuously proportional. Well, if you think about it, that approach actually lends itself pretty well to other kinds of subdivisions as well. You know, so one thing that you might want to be able to do is, is um, divide a segment like this, AB, into pieces that aren't continuously proportional according to this integer ratio, this whole number ratio, 7 to 6, maybe maybe you just want to divide a segment so that the parts are related with some irrational scaling factor. Well, it turns out that that's absolutely possible. I can take a segment like this one, AB, and divide it up into pieces that are related by a irrational scaling factor, by an irrational ratio. All I need to be able to do is construct some other scale, some other custom scale, a custom ruler if you want to think of it that way, whose marks are located so that the segments on that scale are related according to that irrational number. And we're not going to get carried away with this, but I'll show you maybe how I'd do it. Let's, let's say I'd like to just cut AB once so that um, let's choose a fairly simple ir irrational number to construct. Let's choose the square root of 2. So here's what I mean by constructing that irrational number. I'm going to come on over here and just take another segment. And I'm going to put a right angle on that segment. No particular place. I'm going to take my compass and I guess I'll open it up just to some distance. It doesn't matter too terribly much. Yeah, maybe a little smaller. Yeah. Mark that distance equally on both legs of this right triangle. And just to, for the sake of accuracy, I guess I'll grab my all pinprick on each of those marks, just because that makes it a little easier for me to locate them with my pencil. And I try to do what I'm going to do next, which is connect them. Okay. And so what I've done is that I've created a right triangle where the two legs are equal, equal length. And it, we can see from the Pythagorean theorem that there is a square root of two to one ratio that exists between this hypotenuse and either one of the legs. Well, here's why. Let's imagine that those legs are some length. We'll just call them A. Pythag and then this hypotenuse is H. Pythagorean theorem tells us that a squared plus a squared, sum of the squares of the legs, equals h squared. And we're going to do a little algebra. It'll be okay. I'm going to factor out this common factor of a squared from the two terms in the left of this equation. And what's left is just a couple of ones. A squared times quantity 1 plus 1 is h squared. Same, same as what I started with. Now 1 plus 1 we know is 2, so this is just going to be a squared times 2 equals h squared. Now, I've got something squared on the left, something squared on the right, so I'm going to get rid of that by taking the square root of both sides.
And that's going to leave me with a H on the right, and then an A squared on the left, and this two, there's nothing, I, I mean, I have an, an A on the left, not an A squared. The A squared inside of the root can be pulled out and turned into an A. Two, there's not much I can do with. I'll just leave it as a square root of two. So I've got A times square root of two on the left. So that tells me that this hypotenuse is scaled up in length from A by this factor of square root of 2. So H to A is equal to the square root of 2. That's the ratio that they satisfy. Square root of 2 to 1, if you want to think of it as an actual ratio. Now, of course, square root of 2 is an irrational number, so it's not a whole number ratio in the sense that we've been working with in the past. But these are still constructible lengths. And so I can construct a custom scale, a custom ruler, that has this distance, h, butted up against this distance, a. And then I should be able to use that to cut a and b so that the pieces have that relationship to one another. Let me show you what I mean. I'm going to take my ruler and draw a line coming off from A for some distance. So my compasses are getting lost in the drawer here. Here's the one that I want. All right. So I'd like to have the small piece cut here, the something that's proportional to A, and then the larger piece cut here, something that's proportional to H. So I am going to measure A. Whatever it is. And transfer it to point A onto this diagonal line. Now I'm going to measure the hypotenuse of this right triangle. Mark that on our segment too. And I'm just going to proceed like we did when we were cutting our segment AB into continuously proportional segments. I am going to project a perpendicular line up from B so that it goes on past, oops, I forgot to make my mark, my last mark there. Then, see if my compass is big enough. I might have to get a bigger one. Maybe it'll be okay. And I'm going to take that compass. Oh, yeah. This will be fine. Go from A to that last mark. And swing it until it intersects my vertical line. And I'll mark that intersection. Try to keep my head out of your way, sorry. I'm gonna connect A to that mark. Connect point A to that mark. then bring my compass back so that the pivot point is at point A and my marking tip is at the cut on my custom scale.
mark that new cut. Okay. If I bring my straight edge back to AB, line it up carefully, layout square to the straight edge, and then the vertical wing of the or vertical edge of the layout square, bring it so that it intersects that mark. There. This cut, let's call it point C. AC is to CB as 1 is to the square root of 2. All right, so all I've done is reused our construction for transferring basically a custom scale, making our own ruler on the page with marks on it that divide that ruler up into pieces that satisfy particular ratios. It's just in the past that those ratios were whole number ratios. And this time we're just saying that as long as we can construct a ratio, in this case it's, it's a ratio involving an irrational number, as long as we can construct that, then we can put it on a ruler. And then we can use that custom ruler to find our projection points down onto our segment so that we're sure we're cutting it into this prescribed ratio. Well, one of the things that I'm hoping, the main thing that I'm hoping has come across in this tutorial by now is that if you have a design need to take a line segment and cut it so that its pieces satisfy a ratio so that, or cut it several times so that its pieces are all in proportion to one another, then a fast way to do that, a fast and efficient way to do that, that you should probably consider most of the time is to get out your sector, or if you don't have one, or if you're just working on a scale that's too large, then get out your straight edge, your layout square, and your marked ruler. Because then you can, you can rapidly speed up that construction. So the lingering question really needs to be, why does that work? Why do these two, two tools work? And so let's imagine what's going on with the sector. All a sector is, really, is two ruler scales, two identical ruler scales. In fact, I'm gonna use a ruler to speed up my, my drawing here. Where a zero mark on the ruler is at the pivot. So these scales are hinged together. And they have marks down. Both of them are marked identically. Now this isn't a very good sector, this is a snapshot of a sector that's been open to a specific position. So, we labeled our points along the sector. If I happen to have a line segment that 
was just long enough to span between the sevens. That was my segment A, B. And I wanted to cut that segment at a point that was three sevenths from A to B, or if I just wanted to find a segment that was in a three to seven ratio with um, the remaining piece of AB. All I'd have to do is go up here to the threes. Let's call that CD. There's a couple of think, ways I guess I could look at this. I could take my compass and measure the distance between the threes. Transfer it down here onto AB. Let's call that point E. And so I could make a couple of facts here. I could say A E to E B, that's equal three to seven. Is that right? Yes. No. It is not. I could say that A E to A B. That's three to seven. And I could also say that CD to AB is three to seven. And I can ask myself, why? Well, the why to this really boils down to everything that we've been learning so far that's related to ratio, proportion, and similar triangles. In fact, there's two of Euclid's propositions from book six that are the most important. There's proposition two that says anytime you've got a triangle and you cut it, says if you make the cuts, you cut two legs of the triangle, if you make the cuts in such a way that they divide this side proportionately to the way they divide this side, then this line is parallel to this line, and then the converse is true. If you cut it so that this line is parallel to this line, this cut is proportional to this cut. Right, so that was, that was proposition two. Well, isn't that what's going on with the schematic of our sector? The other, the other fact that we take, want to take into account is the side angle side similarity relationship from Euclid. We've got two triangles congruent angles but the ratio between these sides equals the ratio between these sides Proportionality between the sides that contain those angles, and we're able to conclude that those, those triangles are similar. Well, that's what's going on in this picture also. So let's, let's take those two propositions from Euclid and see what they're really telling us about this sector. All right. I've got...
these two triangles. This one here, and then this one here. They share a common angle. So that common angle is equivalent, it's equal between those two triangles. And the smaller triangle, this side and this side, both have lengths that are three steps. So they are in a one-to-one -one ratio with one another. Three to three, one to one, it's the same thing, however you want to think about it. This bigger triangle, the same thing is happening. Seven, seven steps, so those sides are in a one to one relationship. So I know that this triangle and this triangle by side angle side have to be similar. And if they're similar, then I know that these corresponding sides are in the same proportion as this side to this side, or this side to this side, because the corresponding sides of similar triangles are proportional. They all satisfy the same proportion. And since this side to this side is in a three to seven ratio, this length to this length must be in a three to seven ratio. And that's what we just concluded. CD to AB is 3 to 7. That's what, what our, our sector has been telling us all along. So really just those, really it's just side angle side is all that we need in order to see that we are dealing with um, a, a sector that works. Now what makes a sector really work for us is that there truly is a hinge up here. So the static sector that I just drew is only good for cutting up this particular segment that just happens to stretch between the sevens. But it's not going to work for any other segment unless you get one that maybe stretches between the nines or between the tens or something like that. So for a sector to be truly worthwhile, you need to have one that really is mechanical and has a hinge so you can open it and close it in a way that will make it fit a segment of your choice. Now we might ask, why does the straight edge layout square and ruler construction work? So let's do the same thing. Let's, let's lay out a segment. Give myself enough room to work. So I'm going to lay out a segment. That's going to be AB. And I want to cut that in a 3 to 7 ratio of a part to the whole. So I'm going to go ahead and do my straight edge. Layout square and ruler construction. We'll see what well, high does this work. All right, so I want to cut this segment in a, I want to cut off three parts, imagining I've divided it into seven parts. So I need to take my ruler and I need to look for an, a number going from zero, one end zero uh, to that number that's going to be a multiple of seven. So 14, 21, 28, just some number that's easy for me to, looks like maybe 21 might do the trick for me. If I put the 21 on the B and rotate it until the, the zero lines up on my vertical, well, 21 is three times seven. So one step along this ruler will be three inches. So I want three steps, so I need to go from up here down to the nine. Make an X. So then I just take my layout square once again. Line it up with AB on one leg, line the other leg up on my mark. And that cut, 
that C should be so that AC to AB is in a 3 to 7 ratio. So again, our, our question would be why is that? And to see why it is, what I really ought to do is bring my straight edge back. Now I'm draw some triangles that are involved here. Remember, this was three steps, so one, two, three. And this is going to be one, two, three, four steps. About really what's going on here. This triangle has to be similar to the large triangle. And again, that's because of um, side angle side. Those triangles share a common angle. Well, say it has to be similar, but is it really? We see that they share a common angle. We've forced them to be cut. We've forced that triangle to be cut using a parallel line. So Euclid's Proposition 2 from Book 6 tells me that this side is cut in the same proportion as this side. So it's not so much, I mean, now we're going to be able to conclude that, that this triangle is similar to the overall triangle, but we really don't need to because Euclid's second proposition from book two tells us that because we've cut this overall triangle with a line that's parallel to one of its sides, we know that the cuts made on the other two sides must have been done so proportionally. The cut, those sides are cut so that the remaining pieces satisfy the same rational relationship to each other. So since our ruler told us that this cut was made in a 3 to 4 or 3 to 7 ratio on the overall, depending on how you want to look at it, same has to be true down here. So a C to CB has to be equal to 3 to 4. And we can rewrite that ratio. Since AC to CB is 3 parts to 4 parts, we just know that there must be 7 parts on the whole. So AC to AB is 3 to 7. So it's really proposition 2 from book 6 that gets us what we need with the ruler, straight edge, and layout square constructions. That's really all that's going on. So that's why it's, it's not just that it looks right, it is right. 
we're getting we're getting that exact proportionality relationship at least to the limits that are possible with you know, the errors that we'll make with our fat pieces of chalk or unsharpened pencils and things like that. So that's the end of this tutorial and that's also the end of just the basic techniques from unit two. So when we meet again in the next video that's going to be our design workshop where we'll start laying out um, our, 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 our next design for a chest of drawers or a bookshelf that has components that are spaced vertically in continuous proportion to one another. And so we'll make lots of use of these speed up techniques like the sector and the ruler straight edge and layout square constructions. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.